that you have been that you have been able to bring on on to that subject and we look forward to more such evangelists from other states bringing light to the uh, the situation which i'm sure exists in other states as well so thank you very much for that our next speaker is uh, is vijayana right uh, the the zero rupee man i will not take up any more of his time and i will request him to address us Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to thank uh, Met uh, and the uh, founder, um, President Mr. Vivek Oberoi, and his uh, colleagues at Met for having uh, brought Fifth Pillar onto this uh, forum. Um, Fifth Pillar was founded in the year 2006. Uh, it's an organization, non-profit organization, uh, registered as a public trust, and. Um, since 2006 we have uh, tried out quite a few methods um, on trial and error basis and uh, in the last 4 to 5 years um, we have been able to uh, place our fingers on uh, what works and what does not work and now we are at a stage where we are ready to expand nationwide um, build chapters in other states uh, we have chapters now in um, tamil nadu and andhra pradesh very recently we uh, started chapters uh, and offices in new delhi and uh, bangalore as well um before i go into uh, my presentation that i am going to share with you um i wanted to uh, uh put things in perspective as uh, as to what's happening in the country right now as we speak we know that millions of our fellow countrymen are around the streets um so this uh, first slide that i am uh, showing on the screen um spoken by victor hugo a very um a powerful um, thinker and philosopher of the french revolution um i think this is exactly what's happening in india right now uh, but just getting on the streets and fighting for one bill um as much as it is required um it's not going to suffice uh, there needs to be uh, consistent long term efforts meaningful uh, in depth efforts uh that can um make our great nation a greater nation that we can hand over to our next generation uh we celebrated independence day last year uh, last week we have been doing this for the last 60 plus years uh as a mark of respect to our freedom fighters uh, as a mark of gratitude for the sacrifice uh, honoring their selfless efforts for the uh, nation and i'm sure all of you in this room today are here um uh, whatever field of uh business or career or activity you might be in i think i can um confidently uh, safely say that all of us want to rebuild this nation um how much ever great tradition and heritage we have um i think there are a um, lot of areas that need um intensive work to be carried out um so uh, talking about um the janlok for bill for which the entire nation is um crying out loud right now uh, i wanted to share an anecdote a small story with you um in the 18th century uh, england um people were crying for a law to um curb pickpockets uh pickpockets uh, were abundant on the streets of london and apparently um they wanted a law uh, to uh, a stringent law to uh, curb pickpockets and there came a law and uh, the law said if you were found uh, guilty and proven uh you would be hanged in public and uh then the first pickpocket uh, after the law was passed was caught and uh, the hanging um ceremony if you will or episode the incident was going to happen in a public place in a square in london and uh tens of thousands of uh, uh englishmen had gathered around the square and they were all very eager to see um the first uh punishment of the uh, new law and uh, after the hanging was over when uh, all the tens of thousands of people returned home 
quite a few of them found their pockets had been pickpocketed. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is um, there is no one silver bullet that can eradicate corruption or bring about efficiency and transparency. Um, Mr. O'Broy's um, statements in the first uh, page of the book, I'm sure all of you got a copy of this book. I encourage all of you, if you have not already done so, please read every word of the first oh, page. Nice because you, yeah. bringing about efficiency and transparency is not one man's job, yeah. or not one organization's job, or one, not one law's job. Are you? It is uh, rebuilding has to happen from the bottom and it also has to happen from multiple directions for a long duration of time. It's not an overnight job, there's no one silver bullet. So, let me get used to this, please. Give me one moment. Okay. So, why fifth pillar? The name fifth pillar sounds to be like a very strange, unusual um, uh, English uh, word. So, uh, why fifth pillar? Um, I, uh, when I entered into this conference venue this morning, I was, uh, uh, I was like deja vu uh, because uh, simply uh, when I saw the MET logo and the color, I was very excited because uh, fifth pillar also uses the same color and uh, blue is for change. Uh, blue is for transparency. It's been used by uh, international organizations uh, like the United Nations Transparency International. And um, so we, I was very excited with this small thing like that. And then when I um, sat down for the uh, first presentation, Mr. O'Broy uh, started talking about four pillars. And then um, Mr. Vijay Kumar, um, the IAS official with us here, also talked about the four pillars. Then why the fifth pillar? Um, so. Uh, I'm sure we all would agree that the four pillars of democracy, namely legislative, um, executive, judiciary and the press, uh, as much as we see quite a bit of vibrance in the last five to ten years, quite a bit of uh, honesty and courage in combination coming out to bring out scandals in government departments, um, we all can safely agree that uh, the majority of the uh, four pillars uh, are not functioning effectively 100 percent, 24 by 7 for the benefit of the people. And that is why we um, formed the organization with this name, Fifth Pillar, which is nothing but the majority of the uh, society, which is 90 to 95 percent of the uh, population, is people and only 5 to 10 percent of the population comprises the four pillars all put together, um, legislative, executive, judiciary and press. All of them put together in the entire country will not be more than 10 percent, whereas the rest of the people, 90 percent, we wanted them to come forward as in one uh, force, one voice, and say, we the people do not want what is happening to continue. So that is the simple reason why we named the organization as Fifth Pillar. And the forefathers of democracy have uh, defined, given uh, some shape to what democracy is about, by the people, of the people, for the people. While the pronunciations remain the same, the spellings have slightly uh, corrupted, been corrupted in the last few decades. So uh, by the people, yes, they are buying the people, off the people, they switch off the people for four years and 11 months and uh, once in five years for one month they switch on and get their votes and then they switch off the people, so off the people. And far away from the people. Um, they can, they stay as far away from the people as they can. Um, people cannot meet their representative, elected representative. They cannot even call. Uh, there is no elected representative that has published his or her cell phone number or email address in their campaign material. Um, they just vanish uh, after elections. And uh, that is why we the citizens out of the, uh, this number has changed obviously. This presentation was created. Uh, three years back, I'm just uh, improvising the slides as we go. So it's now 1.21 billion and out of the 1.21 billion, like I stated a little earlier, uh, probably uh, 10 million or at the most 15 to 20 million are um, the four pillars and the rest of us are for the fifth pillar. And uh, when we formed the organization, we coined the mission statement uh, that you can read, encourage, enable and empower every citizen of India to eliminate corruption at all levels of society. How does dictionary define corruption? Uh, we are putting this out. Uh, most of the slides that I'm sharing with you today 
our slides uh, which are part of a presentation that we have shown to more than uh, 1200 educational institutions in the country uh, one of our main objectives day to day action items of fifth pillar is to go to schools and colleges and talk to them about a campaign called freedom from corruption so in that we emphasize and uh, we try to impregnate the idea that corruption is not a matter of pride it is a matter of shame it is a matter of losing your self respect and self esteem and uh, we sometimes equate it to begging and stealing so whoever practices corruption helplessly uh, is like begging and whoever practices corruption out of uh, impunity and uh, uh, too much of uh, arrogance is stealing so we um, show this slide to students so that um, it uh, embeds in their mind at an early age before they leave college and school moral perversion depravity perversion of integrity bribery putrefactive decay rottenness uh, the reason we make it a point to drive these messages very harshly and strongly among the student community is um recently uh, not very recently a couple of years back i um, heard um a negotiation going on between two families um uh, and they were trying to market the bridegroom saying that his salary is 18000 rupees and he makes 40000 on the side so it was like projected as though it is like a um, sense of accomplishment there it was like a, a bullet point in his bio data in his resume so uh, we thought um, when parents think like that um, it's high time that we uh, hit the uh, drive the message very hardly so um, putrefactive decay we explain we go a little bit in detail with the students what putrefactive decay and rottenness is and we also highlight to students um, where india stands in several fields uh, in the last 10 to 20 years um, ever since um, i think when the internet opened up um, india has uh, reached out and the world has reached out to india in several ways and um, where are we in cricket number 1 number 2 we were number 6 and 7 a couple of years back we climbed up the ladder now we are on uh, the top 2 top 3 and in the film industry we are only next to hollywood and nigeria i i was thinking uh, we are second but then i learned that nigeria is second they make more movies than india and indians uh, just because they don't make uh, movies for big screen they make only video movies and um, so india is ranking third now in the world arena of making films and information technology as you all would agree uh, indian brain power is sought after in many developed nations the number of uh, top millionaires in the forbes magazine uh, year back uh, 34 out of the first 100 top millionaires of the world and indians are the highest consumers of gold as a nation we consume more gold we buy more gold we use more gold i don't know if we use gold i think we store gold in the um, lockers and uh, medical innovations and technological innovations i don't have to elaborate enough india is um, striding um, high on the charts does it make india complete all these matters of pride that we just saw uh, do they make india complete so uh, we had a volunteer make a video unfortunately the video is not playing let me see if it plays with another click please bear with, bear with me for a moment i think there is a glitch with the uh, uh my friend if you can minimize the presentation in the same folder there is a video called the in incomplete india if you can play that video separately that would be helpful thank you in the folder that you copied the folder named fifth pillar there is a video starting with uh, number 1 incomplete india or number 2 incomplete india i'm sorry <laughs> 